Hello, my name is Willem and I'm a graduate student in the Portuguese lab at the Max Planck Institute of Neurobiology in Munich. Our lab is studying neural underpinnings of sensory motor control, that is circuits that adaptively link perception to action. To study these processes, we're using a remarkable organism, the larval zebrafish. It is a tiny animal that has 100,000 neurons, a much more manageable number than mammals like mice or humans and it is optically transparent. Due to a long history of its use in developmental biology, there is a wide range of genetic tools available. They have been used in the past decade to build calcium indicators in the brain of the fish, which are proteins that modulate their fluorescence depending on the activity of the cells. In order to be able to record the brain activity, the head of the fish has to stay still. For this purpose, we embedded in a transparent material called agarose, and we project stimuli from below. In this case, the stimulus is a moving background that elicits forward swimming in the fish. Now, in order to record the activity from single cells or small regions, it is necessary to optically slice the brain. That is, illuminate a very thin layer of tissue at a time. For example, by using light sheet microscopy. There, we scan a thin beam of laser light in one plane, which, given long enough exposure times, appears as a single sheet of light, which is then scanned across the whole volume of the brain. And as this is recorded from the top, it gives a volumetric video of neural activity. From the camera, we obtain a video which looks like this. Here we can see several slices of the brain and observe the activity of single cells as the fish is perceiving and moving. You can see that there are some artifacts due to the motion of the fish. And over an hour long scale of the experiment, the brain drifts in time. Both of these things need to be corrected. Which brings us to the first Julia package, volume registration. A Julia re-implementation of an earlier method implemented as a Python package for 2D datasets only. The motion correction consists of three steps. First, first finding a nice set of brain volumes to make a reference from that all the further volumes will be aligned to. Then for each volume, finding a rigid shift via phase correlation to find the optimal translation to correct rough motion displacements. And finally, splitting the volume into blocks and finding optimal displacements for each of these blocks and constructing a deformation field that accounts for distortions that cannot be corrected by translation only. After this procedure, we obtain a nice and stable volumetric video of the brain activity. There are still some small shifts uh, which result from big displacements that cannot be corrected, but it is ready now to extract signals. And this can be done in many different ways. For example, in this recording, where the signals are localized to the cell nuclei, one can highlight local maxima in the image and extract signals around them. This, however, is not the best procedure if the signals are overlapping from different imaging planes, as there is light leaking from above and below. This is remedied by a procedure called non-negative matrix factorization, where each voxel can be explained as a sum of activities of multiple sources. I have implemented a variant of this procedure in the calcium package which additionally performs cross-validated hyperparameter search in local patches. The local decomposition of the signal consists of spatial components depicted in the middle and temporal components at the bottom. This demixes overlapping structures and allows pruning out non-neuronal components, such as this the visible residual drift. After extracting these components, we can move on to interpreting the signals in terms of the behavior of the animal and the possible computations that enable it. I will show you an example of this process in a recent study led by my colleague Lena Dragomir. 
investigated the decision making first that leads the fish to turn left or right when presented with stimuli that have a degree of uncertainty or incoherence about their motion. You can see the fish turning to the left when the dots are to the left and to the right uh, when the dots are to the right. We can see how, as the task becomes easier, the amount of correct decisions increases and the latency to the decision decreases. This behavior can be explained by a simple model in which the sensory stimulus after being passed through nonlinearity and being registered as momentary evidence is integrated in time and the rate of the left and the right turns of the fish is modulated by this integrated evidence. Using the small fish effects package we developed, it is very easy to translate this model into Julia code and use it to explain both behavior and imaged uh, neural activity. The package allows us to set, to set parameters and their ranges, as well as derived values from these parameters through an extension of the parameter syntax and by just defining a few additional functions describing the state changes, in this case a simple integration rule, and use this model in conjunction with other packages such as the Optim ecosystem to describe behavior or imaging. As for example in this notebook that is running on Binder, which makes it very easy to create a standard environment to share reproducible analysis, where both the methods are presented in their full detail and they provide an added value through interactive figures. For example, this 3D brain, where we can see the regions that have bidirectional responses or that have very long time constants. To recap, this work has been very nice to do in Julia because of the nice abstractions that allow very general code, high performance programming without contortions, and the very nice package ecosystem where everything is built right from the start. Finally, I would like to thank Ruben Portugas, my supervisor, and the lab, providing a great environment, and the Julia community.